What's happening people? It's your boy Vic and today we have what I hope to be a sailfish catch clean and cook. I'm not sure yet but yesterday we fished out here with Brooke's family, mom and dad. <laughs> Hi! And then Brookie's behind the camera and what we're doing is Yesterday we came to this exact same spot in the valley who were loaded. The only problem we're having today is we have the chum bag in, but all these reef fish like the chubs and mangrove snapper and spots, they're coming and feeding on the chum. So the valley who they'll be on the outskirts of the fish because they view them as predators. They don't want to be on top of them because a mangrove could come up and snatch them. If you guys look over there, that's where the reef is. That's where all those snapper and stuff were. We moved out a little deeper into the sand and we found the valley who. So now we're going to net them. And what I do is I always look for the valley who on top of the water because even if they're three feet down, they can be too fast for the net sometimes. So you want the ones on the very top of the surface. That's a good spot right there. Oh yeah, baby. And I let the net sink because we're really shallow over sand and that's how you get the most because a bait fish's first instinct is always to swim down. So that's why you let the net sink. Oh man, something's chasing them right there. Yeah, normally when you throw the net, they spook. They'll kind of scatter, they'll go further away, and it takes uh, quite a while before they come back into the chump slick. But today, they're just coming right back to the boat. They're hungry today. Yeah. All right, we had to leave off on a good note. We got a solid like 15 in that last throw. And we're offshore looking for a sailfish. What you got, Vic? I think, fingers crossed, that I have a keeper mutton. Brian said, let's go deeper, try to catch some bigger muttons. And I think that's what I got. I dropped a whole valley hoo down to the bottom. And I see color now. Oh no, it's some type of jack species, it looks like. Oh, it's an African pompano, maybe? Yep. It is. Wow. How cool is that? Look at this. That's nice. a pretty neat catch. Coolest thing about these fish is you see that top? He's got these tracers and as they get older, they'll lose them. So his tracers are right here. They kind of look like jellyfish tentacles almost. But super beautiful fish. All Look at the iridescence on the tail. Green, yellow, blue. Not a keeper, but still fun. So, see you later, dude. We're looking for your bigger cousin. Yeah, I guess so. No, no, leave him. You sure? Yeah. Can we reel this one? Um, what do you got? I, I'm telling you, it's either a king or a wahoo. Pull. You have wire, too. So, we'll never know. Well, yesterday we fished with Brooke's parents, but this is actually the next day. We didn't catch too much, so I didn't make a video out of that. Brooke took some of the footage. We caught the African pompano, but Brooke and I are out here again, and we have the full spread out. We got bottom rods out. We got rods up top, and just wanted to give you a little walkthrough of what we're doing. Basically, the last few days, we've just been drifting on these west winds, going from like 90 feet to 200 feet, looking for snapper, kingfish, wahoo, basically anything. And all our lines up top with our live ballyhoo, we have stinger rigs. I tie these myself. This is number five American fishing wire, must add big gun hooks, must add treble hooks. All the stuff will be linked below. And what's really cool for 2020 is must add is one of my sponsors. They actually hooked, hooked me up with my own code and we're getting bit. Oh no. I was trying to tell you guys about my new code when actually one of the rods got hit, but we missed it. So the really cool thing about Mustad for 2020 is they set me up with my own code. So now you guys can save 20% off all Mustad products at mustadfishing.com using my code Landshark. It'll be up here on the screen as well as the description box below. And I think it's pretty cool that I can pass on the savings to you guys. You guys can go direct to consumer. And Mustad, as you guys know, is literally the biggest hook company in the world. And they got all sorts of lures like these vertical jigs. Brick and I absolutely love these things. Um, we catch a ton of fish on these vertical jigs, all sorts of different things, and they're coming out with a lot of different stuff. So definitely utilize that code. 
and I'll have a link of kind of my favorite things to use as far as what hooks. Like I, these hooks are the hooks we've been fishing this trip, catching barracudas, kingfish, muttons on it. Um, great all around circle hook and I'll have it all linked below. So let's get to fishing today and then I'll see you guys later and hopefully we'll have a catch and cook. All right guys, ballyhoo in the rod holder, AKA Rodney, did all the work on this fish. Brick and I are out here. She's caught one African pompano so far, one kingfish, and uh, I don't know what I got. But it's really digging. What was this on? It's on a hole, ballyhoo. On bottom? On bottom. Oh, it's a mutton. It might Is be it? a keeper. Yeah, it might be a keeper mutton. He'll be close. Oh, he might be, be keeper. He might be keeper. Man, that might make our day. I think it's gonna be keeper. Oh yeah, baby. We're over 18. Good job. We got 18 and a half. We got a keeper mutton. And the funny thing about this is, Brick and I fished with her parents yesterday. Brick and I fished with her parents the day before, and we've caught probably a mixture of 10 muttons, but every single one's been undersized. And this right here is our dinner for tonight. One keeper mutton snapper. Um, we've been trying for this fish for a very long time and he hit it really good. I like to leave my rod in the rod holder when bottom fishing. A lot of people don't, but that's what did it for me. And we're in 145 feet of water. We got a live well full of valley hoops. And we got a keeper mutton, right babe? Right. So he's going in the cooler. And this is a really important thing. If you're fishing offshore for snapper, these guys, where we live in Florida, they have to be 18 inches overall, which he was 18 and a half. We catch so many in the 16 to 17 inch range. And when you bring a fish up from really deep water, fish have air bladders and they can't compensate for the pressure difference fast enough so their air bladders will expand, especially when you're in 145 feet of water. So what we do is you have a little venting tool right here. What I do is I come here right behind the peck fin and I go straight in and if you hear that his belly will deflate. What I've actually done is I've punctured his air bladder. So this guy's a keeper, we're going to keep him, but had he not been a keeper, really important to have one of these tools on the boat because it'll help your fish go back down and that's all bottom fish, snapper, grouper, most things that live on the bottom need that ventilation when you bring them up from the deep. Okay. So this is the second rod we just had hit. This was on a ballyhoo, a little weighted ballyhoo with a jig head. And I got no idea what we got on. Oh, I think it's a bonita. Here, come up this way, Mick. Yep. There we go, now he woke up. This is what we got, this big old bonita. Let me show you guys what I had on here. I don't want them to bleed all over. We don't need to gap them. You got a mustad jig head in the front and the treble hook in the back. And we're gonna keep this bonita for bait because these are very scarce this time of year. So we'll definitely keep them. No, no! Don't tell me. Rip it off? I think. Oh, no. Oh, oh, he's munching it, he's munching it, come on. Oh yeah. That's gonna be another kuda, I think. Hey, <laughs> love that sound. I'm guessing it's another barracuda. Brookie just caught that barracuda on a bottom bait valley hoo. Not fighting like a kuda now. No, it's coming straight up. What are you? Don't you love it? Yeah. I don't care if you're a fisherman or not. When you just hear that sound, you know something's going down. So we had just gone over a wreck, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Now it's kind of wide. It's a cuda. It's a big cuda. It's a giant cuda. <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Man, we found a good wreck with some cudas, didn't we? Watch this. We're going to grab this thing. Not going to gaff it. A lot of people would gaff this thing because they're terrified of grabbing and they just let it go, which is a horrible thing to do. So I'm just going to grab it. I'll hold this. 
Look at this. You grab him by the tail, one by the head, and you're in. And he's got a big, fat head. So we got the treble hook right here. He was not coming unglued. And then the Mustad big gun in the front of the snout. Okay, there's one hook. Big old Barracuda. And these things always are sitting above the wrecks, looking to ambush things. And we're gonna let them go. Ready? Mm -hmm. Straight down. See ya. See ya. I really like to hold that tail up and get his head down and just go like that. And that way he gets all that water ru rushing past his gills and goes straight down. Otherwise, a lot of time they'll float belly up if you just release them softly. Sometimes you need to give fish a little push, you know? The only keeper snapper we got all day was this little guy right here. 18 and a half inches, but you know what? I'm not complaining. One side for me, one side for Brooke. So let's go ahead and fillet him up right here into the head, into the scales, down around the peck fin, over the ribs, just like that. And then if Brooke comes on this side, tip of our knife, tip of our knife and just gonna outline his body along his spine. And then find the spine with our knife and just work our knife back up along its bones. All the way to the backbone, through the pin bones, over the rib cage, down this backbone, just like that, over the rib cage, down, and there you have it. And a good sharp knife like this Dexter makes it super simple. As you guys see, the fillets do not lie. And thumbs up if you guys think my fillet game has gotten better. Because I think since the start of this channel, Burke, Burke gives a thumbs up. Since the start of this channel, if once you start to fillet so many different types of fish, it just becomes second nature and you really get confident. And you guys see it just gets so much easier and faster. You learn all the little nuances. This is my favorite one. Six inch boning fillet knife. I like little knives because you can always use a little knife on a big fish and a small fish, but a lot of times using a bigger knife on a small fish doesn't work the same way around. You have a lot much more dexterity with a smaller knife and a lot more control. So for tonight's recipe, I originally was going to do it on the half shell, which is where you would leave it with the skin on. That's Brooke's specialty. She's done a lot of good recipes like that, but we're going to take the skin off for tonight and stick around because I'm whipping up something very good with a lot of Middle Eastern flavor. There's our skin. One thing we got left to do is remove our pin bones. There we go. So I will catch you guys in the kitchen. Hope you guys are ready for tonight's catch and cook because we got a smorgasbord of things going on. I'm talking about homemade pita bread, homemade Greek style sauces, homemade za'atar. I hope I did not butcher that if you guys are from the Middle East or people who eat za'atar and a Middle Eastern style salad, all sorts of stuff going on, the mutton snapper. One thing I wanted to do before we moved on with the cooking is have an open conversation with you guys. As you've seen on this channel, there's been a lot of cooking, a lot of recipes, and it's something I really enjoy. And it's something I really enjoy making for people because I think a lot of people like the recipes. Never in my YouTube career did I think that I would be cooking as much as I did. But I did notice that there's, I feel like there's this divide of people who want to see just fishing content and the kitchen cooks, and then people who are really more focused on the cooking. I want to know what you guys think if you'd be interested in seeing a separate channel with just more recipe driven content. So go ahead and comment below what you guys think. Keep it the same, do something separate, do a mixture of both. I wanna hear what you guys have to say because at the end of the day, it's all for you guys. So please drop a comment below. It'll take five seconds, 10 seconds, just let, letting me know what you guys think. If we should go ahead and pursue a second channel and do some type of cooking components focused around seafood and all sorts of stuff. So do that. Now, the first thing we got going on tonight is I'm gonna make a salad because I wanna chill the salad and we're gonna make a sauce and then work on the pita bread 
fish is gonna be last because nobody likes cold fish. So, a mixture of scallions, uh, canned chickpeas, this is one hot house English cucumber, some diced plum tomatoes, all going in the stainless steel bowl. And then we have a very fragrant mixture of herbs. I have fresh mint, I have fresh parsley, and I have fresh basil, very finely chopped, or minced, I should say. That's gonna go in there. Okay, we also have some fresh lemon zest. Fresh lemon zest, about a teaspoon of coarse sea salt, and some black pepper. Brooke is stealing our chickpeas. <laughs> okay, went ahead and got some really good olive oil, so we're gonna go ahead probably a little less than a quarter cup. We're gonna go heavy on the olive oil. Some freshly squeezed lemon juice. We're gonna give this a mix before I add the feta because I don't want the feta to kind of fall apart. So we're gonna give this a good mix. Okay, we'll give it a taste. Mm-hmm, you wanna talk about flavor. That is loaded with flavor and smell. What do you, you wanna try, Brooke? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mmm, very good. You like it? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. Garlic, not too much. Not too much. Just about this much garlic. I was, garlic... Gonna, I was gonna say when you taste it, nothing is too overpowering. Like it's not like you no. taste and you're like, oh, mint or oh, something. Yeah. Now we're gonna add some feta cheese. This is basically to taste everything is better with feta. Right, Brooke? Good one. I definitely stole that from someone. I've seen that on a cooking show time or two. You definitely stole it. This is the Middle Eastern spice blend that I was talking about. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I believe it's pronounced zatar. Now, what it consists of predominantly is sesame seeds. I'm using lemon zest in place of sumac. I did not have sumac because I honestly could not find it anywhere around here. I guess I got it ordered online. I put in a little bit of cinnamon. I saw some recipes have cinnamon, some don't. We have some oregano. We have cumin, coriander, as well as majoran. As well as majoran. That's how I pronounce it in Slovakia. That's how we say it, is majoran. And that's what we're gonna season our fish with tonight. So we're gonna put this in a little bowl. And since sumac is supposed to be uh, acidic and kind of have a lemony, vibrant taste, that's why I went with the lemon zest to try to mimic it. I have some full fat Greek yogurt right here. And we're gonna make our own little dip. There's our full fat Greek yogurt, which I'm also a huge fan of, as you guys have probably seen on this channel. You can make so many things out of it, and it's a very low calorie option as opposed to sour cream or mayonnaise. We're gonna add some of this blend into our yogurt. Let's go, we'll start with a little less than a teaspoon. Uh, pressed garlic and some, a little bit more lemon zest and olive oil, olive oil to smoothen it out and add some fat content. Do a tablespoon of olive oil. Not sure how this is gonna taste. This is completely um, off of a whim, but I figure we put this atar to good use. We we'll probably go ahead and toss it in there, but I'm trying to do as little amount of dish dishes as possible tonight. That's what, Lise. I, that's what I was thinking. Okay, great minds think alike, right, babe? Right. That is super flavorful too. Got a cast iron pan on medium heat, olive oil, just a little drizzle on our pita. I'm just gonna rub it into there. We're gonna go the oil side down onto the cast iron. 
Okay. They're already puffing up. See them? Oh, they're puffing up. The star of the show, it is a catch clean and cook after all, is the mutton snapper. Some of the best looking fillets of any fish and one of our favorite fish to target and catch. So smart. And we're gonna put our Zatar blend on. Okay, we're gonna do this side, put it down, and then we'll do the other side as it's on the pan. And I'm also gonna add a little black pepper because you gotta add the salt and black pepper. And you know what? Garlic powder because we love garlic powder. And then look, check this out guys. First time making pita bread and look at that. We got a little dough mountain going on and these things look so freaking good. Look at that. I was kind of intimidated when I, when I first um, thought about making homemade pita bread, but honestly it was really easy. Okay, butter bath. Let's add our fish, the seasoning side down. Okay, so we're seasoning the other side of the fish now. We did the salt, pepper, garlic powder, and then the rest of our blend. <laughs> oh yeah, baby! I really wish I was a, ah, no. I wish I had the, uh, the lingo of emerald. All right, now we add the other half of the butter. So I don't know why, but some of the pitas opened up. You know, you get that traditional puff in the middle. Some of them didn't. Let's go ahead. This is the first look into the pita. Look at all that steam coming out of it and that crunch. Oh my gosh, is this gonna be good? <laughs> so good. Not if it's steaming. Come on, give us a bite. Mm. You know how to it's make it real happy? Good. So good? It's nice and warm. And it's got a little bit of crunch on the outside, but it's also soft and nice. Who's out here making homemade pita bread? Like, honestly, like, he called me and he was gonna buy some. And it was like, it's like 8.30 now. <laughs> and he called me at like seven o'clock when he went to the store to buy some stuff. He was like, Brooke, are you really hungry? Cause I think I'm gonna try to make my own <laughs> homemade pita bread. He goes, but it's gonna take a while. And I was like, just do what you want. <laughs> and instead of buying it, he made it homemade and it is so, so good. Good job, Vic. Thank you. Okay, it is serving time. Here's what we're gonna do. We get a big spoonful of salad. Big serving of mutton snapper. Right in the middle there, we have some homemade pita, a good spoonful of our homemade sauce. And all, that's all there is to it. Now, the real question is, how does it taste? We know the salad tastes good, we know the pita tastes good. Let's see how the fish did. to the best girl I know and the best videographer <laughs> on YouTube. Thanks, babe. I definitely don't think so. So well, tender. We already, we already tried the other thing. Mmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It got nice and like crispy. Oh my gosh. It's really good. It is so good. I was a little worried because when you when we made the dip and you said all you could taste was cinnamon, I thought, oh my gosh, the fish is gonna taste like cinnamon. But holy moly, that is so good. I'm not kidding, guys. Like, 
I was so really good. worried too when I first tasted the dip and I thought it tasted like a strong cinnamon taste. Not on the fish, it's so good. It's so flavorful. Well, mm. first of all, mutton snapper is just like out of this world. It was basically like equal parts of all those seasonings, right? Yep. Definitely, definitely try it. Really, really good. Seriously. And it was, I mean, if you got the spices at home, super simple blend, equal parts everything. If you guys want to make it, put it on the fish. I promise you, you probably have never had fish seasoned like this, mm -mm. ever. Cooked in the butter, crisped up nicely, cooked to perfection, about three minutes on, on each side, and it's just so good. You get a little bit of pita bread, and then Brooke and I have some um, olive oil right here. You dip your pita bread in your olive oil. <laughs> I know you heard that crunch. <laughs> it's got a crunch to it. I basically, well, I've known Victor for over eight years now, and it's not like he just decided that he enjoyed cooking or liked trying new things. He's been cooking me things for the last eight years, like mm -hmm. homemade chicken piccata and like homemade Slovakian dishes. Like he's chicken always Marsala, he's everywhere. always loved cooking, but now he's really expanding his horizons and he's doing so good and trying all these new things. So good. And I know he had mentioned a few guys thought he should have a cooking channel. So if you guys are interested in that, comment down below because he's been thinking about doing it for a very, very long time. So if you guys like this stuff and you want to support him in doing something different than just fishing and cooking when he catches, because a lot of times, I mean, you guys see us do like butcher box things and like mm -hmm. cook different meats, but we always talk about how we want to cook other things and like show you guys different recipes, which is something that he can do in a separate channel. So if you guys want to see that and you want to see chicken and beef, <laughs> and things other than just fish, then comment down below, give him some support because he's been thinking about doing it for honestly a couple years now. Yeah, I'm not coming from a place of arrogance or pompous or trying to say I'm a, a good cook by any means. I know I'm just an average Joe amateur cook, but this is something I really enjoy. And I think it's something I wanna pursue in the long run. That's the thing, it's not taking away from, if anything, it's adding to. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in that next video. One more thing. If you don't have all these seasonings at home, invest in them. They're not gonna to be too expensive and it's going to expand your fish cooking horizons. Very, very good. I definitely recommend it. Go buy those seasonings. <laughs> Thanks, bro. See you guys.